when should you use Asana's custom rules feature to create automations, and when is it better to use a third-party tool like Zapier? All will be explained in this video. Hello, my name is Paul Miners, and welcome back to another one of our Asana training videos. Now, if you're already using Asana, and if you're on the starter plan or above, in other words, you're just not on that free version, then you have access to custom rules, which is a really useful feature in Asana that allows you to create automations to do things like when you update a, start, a task, maybe you move it to a different section, or maybe when you complete the task, you can have Asana automatically perform actions, like creating additional subtasks, changing the status, or even posting comments. This is a great feature as it allows you to really systemize and automate parts of your process. However, there are limitations with this feature, and there are times when using a third-party automation tool like Zapier is actually more useful, mainly because it's more powerful, and it allows you to trigger automations from events and things happening outside of Asana in other tools and apps that you use. I'm not actually saying that one is better or worse than the other. I'm going to show you that in our business, we actually use both. There are times when Asana and creating custom rules is generally quicker and easier than using Zapier, but we still use Zapier a lot. Number one, because it's more powerful, but also because it allows us to trigger automations from events in apps and tools outside of Asana. So that's what I'll be discussing in this video. If you have any questions, leave me a comment down below. And if you would like some help, maybe you're brand new to Asana or you want to get more use out of this really powerful tool, maybe you need training for your team, click the link in the description below to book a complimentary introductory call with us and we can share more about our Asana support and training options. Now, as a general rule, if you're trying to automate something and if you can create that automation natively in Asana using the custom rules feature, I think that's the preferred option because then you've built the rule in Asana, you're not relying on some third-party app or software, and also because Zapier's pricing is based on the number of tasks that it is performing for you. So in order to lower the cost of using Zapier, if you can do something in Asana, you should. That's just sort of a good mindset to bring to this whole discussion. Now, generally speaking, the custom rules feature in Asana is most useful for those sort of simpler automations where you're trying to automate actions completely within Asana and you're not trying to integrate other apps or tools that you use. And we're gonna link up here a video that I made last year about how to get started creating rules in Asana. If this is your first time learning about rules, watch that video first because it's gonna be more useful to have a bit of understanding about how rules work. So here's an example of a simple rule in our actual Asana account. This is in our client's project. We have a rule where when a task completion status has changed, so this is the trigger, this is the event that happens that starts the rule. So when the uh, task status has changed, we then perform a number of checks. Checks are like the conditions we're making sure, you know, if these conditions are met, we're gonna perform an action. So we are checking, is the task marked as complete? The task also has to be in certain sections of our project for the different types of clients that we work with. And the client status field, this is one of our custom fields, we're checking that this field is not set to support period. Now, if those three conditions are satisfied, we then perform this simple action. So we are creating a subtask on the parent task, which is to ask the client for a review. And this is dynamically assigned on today's date and is assigned to the assignee of our parent task. So that is a really nice, simple little rule. It's triggered from an event that's happening in Asana and we're performing actions again natively in Asana. I'm not trying to integrate other third-party tools or trigger the automation from outside of Asana. Now there's a couple of other really nice features in Asana rules that actually I think makes it slightly better than using Zapier. Firstly, when I create a rule in Asana, I can actually trigger that rule using multiple different triggers. So with this rule that we looked at before, uh, in this when box here, I can hover my mouse and click the plus button and I can add a second when condition. So I can say, okay, so my first trigger is when the task completion status has changed, or I could also add another trigger. So when the uh, client status has changed. So either of those two actions would trigger this rule. 
If I wanted to do that in Zapier, I'd actually have to set up two separate automations, each with a different trigger. With custom rules in Asana, there's also other triggers available um, that we actually don't have as an option in Zapier. For example, uh, I can start automations when things like the task is no longer blocked. So if you have a task that is dependent on another task being completed first, when that, when that dependent task is completed, that could trigger my rule. And if we look at the Zapier integration page for Asana, there's nothing like that here. There's no trigger for um, a dependent task being completed. We do have the updated task, so I guess you could try and build an automation that way, but certainly it's a lot easier using some of the available triggers here in Asana. There's also useful ones for things like an approval status has changed. So if you have a task that is then approved or rejected, again, we could trigger a rule or an action to happen off the back of that thing changing. So Asana certainly ticks a few boxes there. However, there are some limitations with custom rules that you should be aware of. Firstly, you are limited uh, to the, a certain number of actions per month based on the plan that you're on. So if you're on the starter plan, the Asana rules are only gonna let you perform 250 actions per month. So an action would be changing an assignee, creating a, a subtask, changing a custom field, Based on your plan, if you're on Starter, only 250 actions per month. And of course, the limit there increases for Advanced and Enterprise. Uh, you may find that building your automations in Zapier helps you get around some of these limits. There are also limitations around the number of actions that a rule can perform. So as you can see here, a rule can perform 20 actions after it has been triggered. Uh, this is actually still quite a lot, but if you are wanting to perform lots of actions after that one rule is triggered, again, you may need to look at starting to use Zapier at that point. So while there are some limitations with custom rules, there's plenty of power and capabilities and options for things you can do by using rules in Asana. A couple of other things that I think Asana does really well is you can actually have um, conditional logic or paths where you can say, if this condition is met, do this. Whereas if this other condition is met, do that. Asana also has the ability to integrate with third-party apps. So if you want to, for example, post in a Slack channel or in Microsoft Teams, you can actually create those kinds of automations in Asana without having to use Zapier. So here's an example of another rule uh, where our trigger is when a due date is approaching and the due date is four weeks out, we have these different paths here or we're applying different conditional logic. So we have one path where we say if the task is incomplete, if it's in certain sections and is not assigned to Paul, we create a subtask and that gets assigned to the um, assignee of the parent task. Whereas we have this other path here, similar conditions, but the assignee is empty. We create a similar subtask for Charmaine. And then this third branch where if it's incomplete, the assignee is Paul, um, we assign a slightly different task to Charmaine again. So this is great because we can have you know, one rule that performs different actions based on different logic. It used to be, before we had this capability, you'd have to, have, you'd have to duplicate this rule three times and change the conditions. But now we can set up conditional logic within one rule and it makes it a lot easier to maintain and update these rules. And as I mentioned, the other thing we can do here is we can perform actions where we can integrate third-party apps. So if I add an action to this branch, I can come to the external triggers over here and you can see there are options to integrate uh, tools like Slack or Microsoft Teams. So I could post in a channel. I could even send an email using Gmail. I can integrate with Outlook, Google Calendar, even tools like Notion, MailChimp, Jira. There's actually quite a few different third-party options available in here. Now, this is great because it means that some of the things I may be trying to automate, I can just do natively in Asana, again, without having to involve Zapier, which would be great because it will lower my cost. However, Zapier does integrate with thousands of different services, so I may still need to use Zapier if the tool that I'm trying to integrate here is not an option. Turning our attention to Zapier now, the first and one of the main reasons you'll want to create an automation using Zapier instead of in Asana is if you're trying to trigger an automation from a tool outside of Asana. 
While Asana, with their custom rules, you there are some external triggers you can use, they're very limited, and not all the apps that integrate with Zapier integrate with Asana. So that would be the first thing. For example, with us, we use Calendly to schedule calls with our clients, and when a client books a call with us through Calendly, we want to create a subtask in Asana. That's just not something we could do using Asana rules, and it's why we do that using Zapier instead. So here's an example of a Zap which is being triggered by an invitee creating or booking an appointment in Calendly. If I take you back to Asana for a sec and look at the other triggers we have available, as I mentioned, there are some external triggers here, but really not many options. So if I want to build an automation where the booking comes in and then we action something in Asana, I really have no choice but to do this in Zapier. And there's a couple of other powerful features that Zapier has that Asana doesn't, which I'll show you here. So if I zoom out a little bit, you'll see after our trigger, we do some formatting, we find the Asana user and client, and then we split into paths. Now we have one path over here where if the parent task exists, we perform certain actions. If the parent doesn't exist, we perform different actions. And even based on the type of booking, for certain types of bookings, we actually action updates in Pipedrive. So this is a more powerful, more dynamic automation, which again, we wouldn't really, we wouldn't be able to do this in Asana. And by building it in Zapier, we can control more of our system in one place, in one workflow, without having to create lots of different automations. The other powerful thing that Zapier can do, as you can see here, is we can have branches within branches. So we have the main trigger and actions here. We branch down one level, two levels, and then even a third level down here. Now again, going back to Asana, I can have conditional logic. So I can say, if these conditions are met, perform these actions, but I can only perform that conditional logic one level deep. I can't split into further paths here. So again, just all this to say, Zapier just gives you a lot more power. You can build a lot more dynamic automations. Another advantage that Zapier has over Asana custom rules is that I can perform up to 100 actions in my workflow. So as you saw here, there's branches within branches. I've got actions happening in Asana and Pipedrive. I can perform up to 100 actions using Zapier. In Asana, I can only perform 20 actions after that trigger event. Now, that's actually still quite a lot. There's a lot you can do with 20 actions. But again, if you're integrating lots of different apps after that trigger event happens, and there's lots of actions for those different apps, you may need to start using Zapier. Another kind of frustrating limitation we have with Asana rules is that they currently do not support delay steps. I really hope they update this, but as of right now, if you are, trying to create an automation where you want to perform an action, but you don't want it to happen immediately. Maybe you want to perform that action in an hour, a day, or even 30 days from now. You can't do that with an Asana rule. You would have to use Zapier. So that is a look at Asana's custom rules versus Zapier. As I said at the beginning, it's not either or, it's both. Uh, if you can create your automation in Asana, I think that's where you should start. If you're doing more simple automations, it's nice to be able to do that in Asana, keep everything inside one tool, and I think it's sort of quicker and easier to get those set up. But when you start creating more powerful automations, especially if you are integrating multiple tools and apps in your tech stack, and you're triggering automations from things happening outside of Asana, that is when you will start to have to rely on a tool like Zapier. And if you're watching this, scratching your head, just going, I don't understand this, I need someone to just do it for me, then click the link in the description below to book a complimentary introductory call with us, and we can help you with setting up your Asana account, team onboarding and training, and building automations like I've shown you today. I've really focused on systemizing and automating as much as I can in my business over the last couple of years. And I found that not only does it make us more efficient because we're automating these things, it means we make fewer mistakes and we're actually able to increase our capacity and take on more clients. And that's really where the growth and revenue opportunities lie. If you have any questions, feel free to leave me a comment down below. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.